In the words of the Joker from the Dark Knight trailer, where do we begin? Transformers The Last Night. So Transformers The Last Night is another Transformers bus fire monstrosity directed by Michael Bay. I'm trying to be fair to this one, man, but there's so much shit that happens in this movie. So much nonsense. I'm not gonna hit all of it. All the shit that I gripe about, trust me, there is more. Basically, Transformers keep coming to Earth, and now big bad evil Transformers planet is coming for Earth. Optimus Prime's been reprogrammed. Our brainwash point is he's bad. Don't worry, he's not on screen that much, so you don't have to worry about it. Been bad jokes, awkward dialogue, Mark Wahlberg has to save the day. From the get-go, it's back in the Dark Ages, because, you know, there's, ooh, secrets of the past. And at first, I was like, all right, this looks like it could be, uh, nope, the dialogue started. And attempts at humor, and it's awkward and weird. It's not funny, it's just Michael Bayisms. And now you know you're just, you're in for a ride in which you just have to survive this. Nothing makes sense, man. Just tonally speaking, the world in this movie contradicts itself. At first, you hear a voiceover, and Transformers keep falling out of the sky. War is everywhere, they fight everywhere, they're just destroying shit. You see that scene in the trailer? It's also in the movie where there's busted up stadium all because of them there's even these new government agencies that deal with transformers because they're all bad in the eyes of the people you feel like things are shitty everywhere because 100 percent of human beings are concentrating on this invasion that's happening on our planet yet when tvs are on you still see things like indy 500s happening rich people still play polo you feel like it's just contradictory information sometimes the movie wants you to feel like it's just all encompassing there are transformers everywhere it literally has changed the living conditions of our world other times the world feels no different than our world it's weird. Speaking of awkward Michael Bay humor, it's in it. Like there's this guy, like this big, huge planetary thing is coming after our world. This other dude's like, that sounds like nerd shit to me. I'm like, you do know you live in a world where the movie told us that robots are coming here at an exponential rate. Why is that so unbelievable? Like, why is that weird? If this was the time of Transformers 1, yeah, I would expect some disbelief. As it stands, I feel like information like that would be about as believable as there's a Walmart down the road. Oh shit, no kidding? All right, now I know. And shortly into this movie, it concentrates on Mark Wahlberg. He runs this junk shop where he has some Autobots and it's just awkward humor and awkward humor. More awkward humor is painful. It felt like this scene was going on for a half an hour. Grant, I know it probably wasn't, but damn it, it felt like it. And in the end, it's how long a scene feels, not how long it actually is. If a scene feels like a half an hour, it's only five or 10 minutes. Guess what? To the person watching, it's a half an hour. It's not funny. It's not clever. It's doing nothing for the characters, nothing for the plot. It's just a time sink. And then there's little girls there. There's a little girl from the trailer like, I want to fight them. She's like 14 years old. And by the end of the movie, you're like, what did you do for the movie? Like, why are you here? She didn't do anything. She's even in the last act of the movie. That's just a bunch of explosions and action and things are happening. It's just death. It's a lot of action death. And she's there for it. She's there for it because the John Goodman robot with the cigar from the last movie, she asked him like, can I go with you? He's like, yeah, sure. Let's take a field trip to the front lines, kid. Even the main girl in this movie, super educated historian. You can tell Michael Bay's like, I'm really good at titty and ass shots. But 2017, we live in a progressive world, so I have to make the girl smart and actually have to make her do shit. I, I'll try. Those of you looking forward to Optimus Prime, he shows up at the end of the movie. But yeah, he's on the poster. He's on the poster a lot more than he is in the movie. Reminded me of Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, where Optimus Prime was not in the movie for the majority of it. I did like the Josh Dumel thing. He's in this movie too. He's in the first couple Transformers movies. But he's a government guy. He's a military guy. And the government and the military are really like, no, they're all bad in our eyes. I like the fact that he's like, I've worked with them, but... I have a job to do. That's a good conflict, but not well executed. This movie's two and a half hours long. If you cut out all the cheesy ass, corny, awkward ass dialogue moments among human beings that no one gives a shit about because it's called Transformers, you have yourself a two hour movie that's still not great, but better. And this is an unusual complaint of mine, but it's a complaint of mine. The aspect ratio kept changing. It was really weird. You know how some movies like Christopher Nolan does this a lot where he'll film the action sequences in IMAX. So for that action sequence, it's boom, the aspect ratio goes from the scope aspect ratio that looks like this, an action sequence. Boom, oh, it fills up the whole frame of the IMAX. And when the action sequence is done, goes back to scope. This one, the action sequences did that, but they would switch back to scope and then go back to IMAX and then scope and then IMAX, it was really odd. But it wasn't like after the scene was done, it was woven within the scene itself. The shots were different aspect ratios in the scene. It was really jarring. It was like, all right, action sequence, the aspect ratio looks like this. We're gonna get some Transformers, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, let's do it. Let's get some Transformers. All right, action sequence. 
sequence. Oh shoot, you're taking fire, I got your back. It's like these scenes were filmed with four cameras, two of which were IMAX cameras, the other two were normal digital cameras. And somehow a successful director thought it would be what, unnoticeable to just film the scenes with different cameras. No one will notice. Now you're not gonna be able to unsee it. I feel kind of bad about that. Granted, not everyone's gonna find that jarring, but I used to be a projectionist. Aspect ratios, they jump out at me. So it was really noticeable. I was like, why is it happening like that? Basically in a nutshell, this movie is just too jarring. It tries to set up so much that it's cluttered when it starts. And as the movie goes on, it's cluttered in a different way. It's no longer set up. It's just filler. It's cluttered filler. Then the movie goes on with half of the unnecessary characters and then introduces half of the other unnecessary characters. And again, with more cluttered filler. I mean, that's what the movie should be called. Transformers, the cluttered filler. Then the last act of the movie happens and there's so much shit happening. You're like, Wait, where are they right now? A lot of shit happens, and then it ends as abruptly as any Transformers movie does. Michael Bay says this is his last Transformers movie. I genuinely hope it is. Because a Transformers story could be a good one, but it's just done by a director who I don't think gives a shit. The movie's too cluttered. It concentrates on all the wrong stuff. The dialogue's not funny. Half the characters, you're like, why are you in here? What did you do? The little girl was useless. The humor didn't land. It just is so painfully awkward when a joke has a pause after the joke so people in the theater can laugh so they're not missing any dialogue after that. But no one laughs. It's just, it's really awkward. It's just basically every Michael Bay-ism transgression that Michael Bay has done in the previous Transformers movies that are gripes in the previous Transformers movies doubled down for this one. I don't get why. Like I said, I'm sure there's more, but my brain's like, get the fuck out. I'm, I'm forgetting the movie as I'm talking about it. Because in the end, Transformers The Last Night hopefully is the last of the dog shit. Oh, here's hoping, man. Here's hoping Michael Bay actually sticks to his word. All right, guys, so Transformers The Last Night. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Or what's your favorite and least favorite Transformers movies? Whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more.